All right, team histories. Uh, we are up to San Jose. And the San Jose Sharks have had a pretty solid history. No, no Stanley Cups. Uh, that's, that's the one big difference between them and some of the other ones on the board. But they're not far off, and you get the feeling that it's going to happen at some point soon. Uh, that, that, of course, is going to depend on whether the young kids that are coming up uh, and the brain trust at the top can keep everything together so that they're able to remain in that contender status. That's really the tricky part is when all the veterans move along, can the new kids who come in maintain that level of excellence? Um, and for San Jose, it's a level of excellence they never had their first time around because they're kind of the Oakland Seals, kind of, sort of. Uh, the Guns, who were minority owners with the Seals, uh, were, were there when the Seals went to Cleveland and eventually merged with Minnesota. And Minnesota wasn't drawing very well and they weren't playing very well in the late 80s. So the Guns were like, we'd like to move this team. We'd like to move them to California. And the NHL looked and went, nah, we're not going to do that. We're not going to move the Minnesota North Stars. Sorry. So what they did instead was they told the Guns they could have an expansion team and then there was some weird deal where they got some players from the Minnesota organization and then both teams were in an expansion draft after that. The, basically, San Jose got a team coming out of that that looked like it could win a lot of fights, not a lot else. Goaltending that was okay, uh, but this team was better than it was supposed to be. And the amazing thing is, um, in 92-93, they put up one of the worst years in any team's history. There's a video on the channel about you know truly awful seasons, and it's got that San Jose Sharks video in it because they were terrible. And then they made the playoffs the year after that. And it was through really solid management that that happened. So uh, they were a much better managed team than the Oakland Seals. It wasn't even close. Um, now, the expansion fee was $45 million compared to now where it's $650 million. You can see why the Seattle team that's coming in next year is going to have a little bit better uh, chance, or in two years, oh, sorry, two years, why they're going to have a little bit better chance to, to draft a, a pretty good team out of the gate than did San Jose with an expansion fee of $45 million. Uh, that's that's quite the growth in your expansion fee, and that's why I don't think the NHL stopping at 32. But we'll see. Another 650 million. Remember, if they if they announce, okay, we're going to put teams in in Quebec and Kansas City. Okay, there's one in the east, one in the west. That would give them 1.3 billion dollars. So the the NHL would love to have that money. So don't don't worry if you're waiting for a team. It might be like Major League Soccer here pretty quick. MLS is expanding way too fast. Anyways, uh, the Blades was actually the winner of the Name That Team contest. And the owners looked at that and went, marketing? Marketing went, ah, the Blade's a knife. So I don't think we should have that there. And then, of course, people in Saskatoon are going to go, hey, we're the Blades. That's uh, all right. Pipe, just sit down. Don't worry about it. Uh, they opted for the second place finisher in the voting, which was the Sharks. And in, in hindsight, it was a fantastic idea. Because um, Blades doesn't work for an NHL team. It's fine for Western Hockey League, and they've got that team and all that tradition. But it wouldn't work at the NHL level. I'm, I'm not sure how you don't end up with a, with a really boring logo out of that at the NHL level. The San Jose Blades. Yeah. So anyways, I'm glad they went with what they did. Uh, because Sharks is a marketing dream. Really it is. Um, All-time leaders in points. Patrick Marlowe leads there with 508 goals, 574 assists, 1,082 points. And through his first few years in the NHL, it really didn't look like he was ever going to get to that level. So kudos to him, and we'll see whether or not he returns to San Jose for one last year this coming season. He hasn't signed anywhere yet at the time I'm recording this. Joe Thornton, 244 goals, 780 assists, 1,024 points. Thornton is proof that uh, goal scoring is great, but if you don't have the guy to set him up, who cares? So Thornton, who's been paid handsomely over his career, um, now you know you hear about, oh, this guy deserves more money than that guy because this guy just gets assists. Yeah, uh, Thornton's just had assists for a lot of his career. Been pretty darn good at it. Um, one of the best passers in NHL history. Uh, Joe Pavelski, 355 goals, 406 assists, 761 points. Uh, he's been scoring a lot of goals, and we'll see whether or not that continues this coming season. However, it'll be for Dallas. 
So he's likely played his last game as a shark. That being said, would I rule out at some point in time he ends up a shark again? No. No, not with a guy who played there that long. Uh, Logan Couture, 240 goals, 267 assists, 507 points. And going strong, getting better every year. Uh, Brent Burns, 143 goals, 323 assists, 466 points. He, of course, is going strong as well now in his mid-30s. Owen Nolan, 206 goals, 245 assists, 451 points. Uh, Jeff Friesen, 149 goals, 201 assists, 350 points. Mark Edward Vlasic, 67 goals, 344 assists, 244 assists, 311 points. Jonathan Chichu, 165 goals, 126 assists, 291 points. And Vinny Domfus, 92 goals, 197 assists, 289 points. Your overall wins leader, career-wise, uh, Evgeny Nabokov with 293. Antti Niemi, 163. Martin Jones, 138. So he's got a ways to go before he's number one. But I think he could be number two at the end of this coming season because he only needs 26 wins to pass Niemi. Vasa Toskala, 65. And Arthur Urbe with 57. So folk hero Arthur Urbe is on the board. Coaching wins. Todd McClellan, 311. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about being knocked off his perch for a while here. Uh, Ron Wilson, 206, Daryl Sutter, 192, Peter DeBoer, 183, and Kevin Constantine rounds out the top five with 55. So, Constantine, who was there for, I believe, just the two seasons, um, a good year and then just miserable, uh, easily forgotten, I guess, by younger fans. Uh, but I always thought he had one of the coolest names, you know, because Constantine, you just think of the comics. Anyway. Uh, yeah, no, it was comics before it was a TV show and movies. Playoffs. These guys are in the playoffs more often than not. And like I said, it's remarkable because in 92-93, they had a miserable year. So their expansion year of 91-92, and then the sophomore year, where they had a huge sophomore jinx in 92-93, um, are two of the seasons they've missed the playoffs. So out of 27, they've only missed six times. Uh, it is remarkable. The other misses, 96, 97, 2003, and 2015. They, of course, went to the finals in 2016. They were in the conference finals in 2019 as well. Uh, a lot of controversy about that. We don't need to get into that here. This really is just a, let's take a look at their overall history. We can That'll be discussed more and more and more as this season goes along, I would think. This season coming up 2019-2020. Uh, captain's history. Doug Wilson's their captain that first year from 91 to 93. Uh, Bob Airy, 93 to 95. Jeff Odgers, 94 to 96. Todd Gill, 96 to 98. Vinny Domfus, 98 99. Owen Nolan, 98 through 2003. Patrick Marlowe, 2003 to 2009. And then he loses his captaincy. Uh, Rob Blake's captain for 2009 2010. Joe Thornton, 2010 to 2014. Loses his captaincy. And a year later, they named Joe Pavelski. Pavelski from 2015 to 2019. As far as I know, there's no indication of who necessarily gets the captaincy this coming season. Uh, I would lean towards Eric Carlson because Carlson was excellent at it with the Ottawa Senators. They've committed to an eight-year contract for Carlson. I would think he should be the captain this year, but we'll see. Uh, top 10 draft picks. These guys don't have a, a huge number of great top 10 draft picks early. So the way that they become a, a, a playoff team is through trading and smart free agent signings. And just having a really good farm system. Number two draft pick in 91 is Pat Falloon. That, of course, is right after Lindros. Now, how different would things have been if the NHL had said the number one draft pick belongs to the Sharks this year, the expansion team coming in? You would have had Lindros with the Sharks. Who knows how different things might have been with him being on the West Coast and avoiding the punishing hits from Scott Stevens. Uh, Mike Rathje, number three overall in 92. 96, drafting sixth overall, Victor Kozlov. 96, drafting second overall, Andre Zuzin. 97, drafting second overall again, Patrick Marlowe. Marlowe is the first big hit on the board when it comes to their top 10 draft picks. Um, not not to disparage Pat Falloon. Falloon had a decent career, but he he wasn't really superstar level. Uh, Brad Stewart was number, number three in 1998. Uh, 2003, they draft sixth, they get Milan Mahalik. 2005, drafting eighth, they get Devin Setaguchi. 2007, drafting ninth, Logan Couture, and that's a home run. And their 2015 number nine pick was Timo Meyer, who also appears to be a home run among their top 10 draft picks over their history. So not an overly long history, comparatively speaking, with some of the other videos that I've done in this playlist. 
And thank you, San Jose, for having a shorter history. Um, May 31st, 1991, as we get to the trade side of the board. Tony Herkus was was uh, picked up by the Sharks from Quebec for Greg Pizlowski. Um That was a smart move for San Jose overall. May 31st, 1991, San Jose gets a 1991 second-round draft pick, Sandoz Ozelinch, and a 1992 first-round pick, which became Andre Nazarov. And that was just so the Minnesota North Stars could keep Mike Craig. We will give you a second and a first so we keep Mike Craig. I know how bad that looks now because there's a lot of younger people going, who's Mike Craig? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Craig had a decent career. Was he worth losing a second and a first over? No. No. Uh, but at the time, Minnesota felt he was going to be an excellent forward and it was worth that risk. Uh, September 6, 1991, San Jose acquires Doug Wilson. Chicago gets Kelly Toporowski. And a 1992 second round pick, which became Boris Mironov. So I'll go ahead and say Chicago wins the trade. Though Doug Wilson being traded to San Jose foreshadows uh, really the rest of the run this team has had since then. Oh, look, that's their first year. So Doug Wilson's been a part of this organization forever, in part because Channel, or Chicago decided, okay, we're, we're just going to move on. Um, <clears throat> June 26, 1993. San Jose gets Sergei Makarov. A 1993 first-round pick, which became Victor Kozlov. A second and a third. The third becomes Ville Peltonen. And all Hartford wanted back was a 1992 first-round pick. Awesome. That pick was Pronger. Yeah, whoops. Uh, so Pronger probably would have been useful for San Jose. Um, but that being said, at the time, Makarov uh, played a big part in that team turning around. 93-94. They get Makarov. They get Larionov. And it does play a big role in this team becoming a playoff team when they do. Uh, March 6, 1995, San Jose acquires Craig Jenny and money, so cash. St. Louis gets Jeff Norton, or Jeff Norton, I should say, and a 1997 third. Not a bad deal for San Jose. Craig Jenny played around. At some point, I'll do a Craig Jenny video. Uh, his 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 career. October 24, 1995, San Jose gets Ray Shepard. Detroit gets Igor Larionov. Uh, Ray Shepard was a good goal scorer. He could score you 30, and he could do it without any foot speed at all. I still don't know how he got some of the goals he got, because he was slower, and you'd always hear about how he was slower, but then he'd get 30 goals. Uh, Larionov, of course, went on to help Detroit win some Stanley Cups. So I'll give this to, to Detroit in the trade department. Uh, October 26, 1995, San Jose gets Owen Nolan. Colorado gets Sanders Ozelinch. Oza Lynch was great offensively, not great defensively. And Owen Nolan really gave the uh, San Jose Sharks a bit of an, an identity up front. So this was kind of a trade that worked for both teams. One of those rarities. Uh, March 18th, 1996, San Jose gets Darren Turcott and a 1996 second round pick. Winnipeg gets Craig Janney. So yeah, Janney lasted a uh, little over a year in San Jose. And then went to Winnipeg, and Turcott and Pick were coming back to San Jose. Uh, June 22nd, 1996, San Jose gets a 1996 first, which became Marco Sturm. Chicago gets two 1996 second-round draft picks, neither of whom became uh, uh, NHL players. So I'll give that win to San Jose, because Marco Sturm, they used to get one of their best players that they've ever had. Uh, January 25th, 1997, San Jose gets Ed Belfour. It's easy to forget Ed Belfour played as a shark, isn't it? Uh, Chicago gets Alf Dahlin, Michael Sikora, and Chris Terreri. Uh, Belfour, Belfour at this point, he, he, he was done in Chicago. And the biggest problem I had with Ed Belfour was when he wanted to play, oh, he was, he was great. But when he was disinterested, he was bad. And he was, he was pretty bad for San Jose. And there were points with Dallas where he wasn't very good either, or just didn't seem to be overly interested um, in that he was a very emotional kind of guy and didn't seem like he was emotional sometimes when he lost when it didn't seem like he cared very much. Anyways, that being said, June 21st, 1997, San Jose acquires a 97 first round pick, which became Scott Hannon. Carolina gets a 1997 second and a 1998 third that they used to draft Eric Cole. So pretty good pick there in the third round for the Carolina Hurricanes. August 18th, 1997. San Jose gets Mike Vernon and a 1999 fifth round pick. Detroit gets a 1998 second and a 1999 second, which became Sheldon Keefe. So it's noteworthy because of 
it's Sheldon Keith, but it's Sheldon Keith. Um, <laughs> anyways, November 13th, 1997, San Jose gets Dave Lowry and a 1997 first rounder, which becomes number one overall, Vinny LeCavalier. And if you don't remember him playing for San Jose, don't worry about it. He didn't. Florida gets uh, Victor Kozlov and a 1998 fifth, which became the Arrow Spachek. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, Florida traded away the number one draft pick. And the best part is that in November they did it, and then that became uh, your, your your number one draft pick. And it was ni- the 98 number one draft pick. You just go ahead and change that. Because, yeah, it was the 1998 number one draft pick, and the trade was made November 97. Don't trade that number one draft pick in November because it could end up being number one overall. And in Vinny's case, it was. On November 20th, 1997, San Jose gets Mike Ricci in a 1998 second. Colorado gets Sean Donovan in a 1998 first, which becomes Alex Tangay. So overall, Colorado wins that deal because Tangay, pretty good player. Ricci, though, is kind of the face of San Jose. Uh, Do we all remember when he was the most handsome? No, we don't. We don't remember him being voted most handsome. Yeah. Um, and, And what a head of hair on Mike Ricci. Maybe I want to make him the the uh, the thumbnail for this video. March 24th, 1998, San Jose gets Brian Marchment, David Shaw, and the number two overall pick, which becomes David Legwand. Yeah, they don't keep that either. Tampa Bay gets Andre Nazarov and the number one draft pick. Basically, Tampa had the choice to swap draft picks with San Jose, so they did. They're like, yeah, we'll swap because we'd rather draft number one than number two. Every single GM in the league would do the same thing. Uh, June 27th of 1998, San Jose gets the number three draft pick, which becomes Brad Stewart. Uh, A 1998 second round pick, which becomes Jonathan Chichu. Nashville takes that number two overall draft pick, David Legwand, and a 1998 third round draft pick. So uh, you can look and say, well, you know, they traded down, but they also got Chichu in the second round. So pretty good, pretty good move by San Jose right there. Pretty smart. Uh, March 23rd, 1999, San Jose gets Vinny Domfus. Montreal gets a 1999 fifth, a 2000 first, which they used to draft Marcel Hosa, and a 2001 second. So, I'll go ahead and say San Jose won that deal. March 5th of 2001, Tamu Solani joins the Sharks. Anaheim gets Jeff Fries and Steve Shields in a 2003 second. Anaheim traded... Timo Solani to San Jose. That's still weird to me. I still find that really, really odd. Uh, June 24, 2001, San Jose gets a fourth round draft pick in the 2001 entry draft, which they used to draft Christian Erhoff. Chicago gets a 2001 fourth, sixth, and seventh. But Erhoff, an NHL player, so they win that trade. Uh, March 5, 2003, San Jose gets Brad Boys and Alan McCauley, and a 2003 first, Toronto gets Owen Nolan. So Nolan uh, sadly ends up being traded off to Toronto. And I say sadly because, boys, Macaulay in a first. eh. That first wasn't an NHL-level player, so eh. Uh, It looked like a great haul at the time. June 22nd, 2003, San Jose gets a 2003 seventh-round pick. Philadelphia gets a 2004 sixth-round pick. So Philadelphia trades up. Uh, That seventh-round pick becomes Joe Pavelski. So, whoops. November 14th, 2003, San Jose, dra- or San Jose gets the 2005 second round draft pick, which they used to draft Mark Edward Vlasic. Uh, Calgary gets Mika Kiprasov. So, at the time, you look and go, Calgary ripped him off. But, long term, it's really evened out. I'm not saying that because Kipper's retired, San Jose wins the deal. No, Kipper was fantastic for Calgary for a while there. But, the fact that they drafted Vlasic in the second round means they don't out. Oh, just flat out lose the trade. Uh, June 26, 2004. San Jose gets a 2004 third round pick, which they use for Thomas Grice, a fourth and a ninth. Boston gets the 2004 second round draft pick that they used to draft David Krejci. So there are a lot of guys who could have been San Jose Sharks if they wouldn't have moved draft picks. Uh, Vinny LeCavalier, Chris Pronger, and uh, David Krejci are three names that come to mind right off the bat. Um, maybe this team would have won a Stanley Cup. However, however, uh, November 30th, 2005, uh, they make a really smart move in picking up Joe Thornton before anybody even realizes he's available. Uh, Mike O'Connell botched this so badly, Boston couldn't wait to fire him after this. 
Uh, Boston gets back Wayne Primo, Brad Stewart, and Marco Sturm. So two, two first-round draft picks there and uh, Keith Primo's brother, and that's what it takes to get you Joe freaking Thornton. No, that's just no. October 1st, 2006, San Jose gets Vladimir Malahov. Um, that's the French Malakov, of course, but Malahov is the way it was said on the... doesn't matter. Uh, 2007 first, which becomes uh, David Perron. I know he didn't play for San Jose. We'll get to that. Uh, New Jersey gets Jim Fahey and Alexander Koliak. And Koliak would end up being traded back to San Jose within a year. Um, February 25th, 2007, San Jose gets Craig Rive. 2008 fifth round pick, Montreal gets Josh Georges. And a 2007 first round pick, which becomes Max Pacioretty. Yeah. Uh, February 27th, 2007, San Jose gets Bill Guerin. St. Louis gets... Jay Barabal, Ville Neiman, and a 2007 first, which became David Perron. So to get Garen and Rive, they gave up first-round picks, which became Pacioretty and Perron. Huh. All right. Uh, February 27th, 2007, as well, San Jose gets a seventh-round draft pick in the 2007 draft, which they used to draft Justin Braun. And Pittsburgh gets Nolan Schaefer. He was a third-string goaltender. So for people who are like, who? Yeah, he's a third-string goaltender. Um, Braun, that's a good move. June 22nd, 2007, San Jose acquires a 2007 first-round draft pick, which they used to draft Logan Couture. St. Louis gets another 2007 first-round pick from St. Louis, or San Jose, I should say, which becomes Lars Eller, and they get a second and a third as well. So San Jose gets to the draft table and go, oh, we want number nine uh, to draft Couture. They get him. It's a smart move, but still, Pacioretty, Perron, it doesn't matter. Um, it all kind of evens out with them. February 26, 2008, San Jose gets uh, Brian Campbell. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres get back a 2008, or no, 2008 seventh goes to San Jose as well. Buffalo gets Steve Bernier and a 2008 first, which they used to acquire Tyler Ennis. So they draft Ennis. Uh, Bernier was one of those guys who looked like he had the potential first round draft pick. Good player, not great. And, you know, eventually... Teams stopped asking too much of them, stopped expecting too much of them. Uh, whether it was Buffalo or Vancouver, there were expectations he just couldn't meet. Um, July 4th, 2008, San Jose acquires Dan Boyle and Brad Lukowicz. Tampa Bay gets Matt Carl, Ty Wishart, a 2009 first, which became Kyle Palmieri, and a 2010 fourth-round draft pick. So Palmieri ends up going the other way. Another first-round draft pick that they trade away that ends up becoming a pretty good player in the NHL. And, of course, Tampa Bay didn't draft Palmieri, so we know that ends up in Anaheim. Um, August 28, 2009, bewilderment. Daniel Rahimi and Patrick White are traded to San Jose. Vancouver gets Christian Erhoff and Brad Lukowicz. Um, thanks for Erhoff, San Jose. Uh, whether it was a money issue or whatever it was, Erhoff played pretty darn well for Vancouver for a few years. Of course, then he went to Buffalo to get a chance at the Cup. Um, it's what he said, best chance to win. Sure, yeah, huh? But uh, that was a trade that, that at the time looked like highway robbery for Vancouver because Rahimi and White were never going to play. The fact that Patrick White was involved in a trade was stunning for Vancouver fans at the time. Uh, September 12, 2009, San Jose gets Danny Heatley in a 2010 fifth-round pick. Ottawa gets Jonathan Chichu, Milan Mahalik, and a 2010 second-round pick. Uh, Heatley played his way out of out of Ottawa, wanted to go somewhere else, and San Jose picked him up. He didn't last very, very long with, uh, with the Sharks either, however. Um, June 24, 2011, San Jose gets Brent Burns in a 2010, 2012 second-round pick. Minnesota gets Charlie Coyle, Devin Setaguchi in a 2011 first, which they used to draft Zach Phillips. Zach Phillips never made the NHL. Setaguchi never really hit that that level he was supposed to. So Charlie Coyle took a lot of the uh, scrutiny. So people would look and go, well, Charlie Coyle's all they got for Brent Burns. Yeah, they botched the first round draft pick and Setaguchi just never reached uh, that level that he was expected to in the NHL. So I don't put it on Coyle. And at the time, the trade looked pretty decent, in all honesty. It didn't look like that lopsided of a trade. So, uh, I mentioned Heatley wasn't there for long. July 3rd, 2011, San Jose gets Martin Havlat. Minnesota gets Danny Heatley. So, Heatley moved on from San Jose within two years. Uh, June 30th, 2015, San Jose gets Martin Jones. Boston gets Sean Corrali. And one of those first-round draft picks, 
um, that Boston tends to tends to rack up under Don Sweeney in 2015 and 2016. Uh, Martin Jones, of course, is on the board as one of the top five winningest goaltenders for San Jose. Uh, I I found it weird that he went from L.A. to Van or L.A. to to, to Boston and then from Boston to to San Jose, as Boston was stockpiling draft picks. Um, <clears throat> and the the three draft picks in 2015 that's one of the most angering moments in my fandom uh, ever. Uh, February 26, 2018, San Jose acquires uh, Evander Kane. Buffalo gets a 2019 first, Daniel O'Regan, and a 2020 fourth. So we have yet to see just how much this trade might have cost San Jose. But think about all the other first-round draft picks they've traded and how many of them have become pretty darn good players. If you're a Buffalo fan, uh, it, the odds are good. Uh, June 19, 2018, San Jose gets a 2018 fourth, fifth, and a 2019 second. Florida gets Mike Hoffman and a 2018 seventh-round draft pick. That's not a bad haul for a guy who never played a game for you, for when you're just laundering him to send to Florida, which made Ottawa angry. And that meant that when they got Eric Carlson, they had to kind of promise, you're not going to move Eric Carlson to the East, are you? No. Well, if you do, you owe us more. So uh, right after that trade, um, and by right after, I mean three months later, September 13th, 2018, San Jose gets Eric Carlson and Francis Perron. Uh, Ottawa gets Josh Norris, Chris Tierney, Rudolph Balsers, Dylan DeMello, a 2019 first, second, 2021 first, and a 2022 first. Remember what I said about San Jose first round draft picks? They tend to become pretty good players when they're traded somewhere else. Um, the odds of this trade coming back to bite San Jose, it's pretty good. Um, Norris could debut as soon as this year. I would think as latest next year for Ottawa. Uh, Tierney's been decent. Balsers has the, the, the potential. Um, even though I spelled it wrong there. Let me just go ahead and fix that. Because, yeah, that's going to drive me nuts now that I've seen it. Uh, Dylan DeMello, useful number six defenseman, and then three first-rounders in a second. That's a high price to pay. And I've mentioned uh, when I talked about Lindros that, that they paid, I think it was eight pieces for Eric Lindros, the Flyers did. And that's about eight pieces that the San Jose Sharks gave up. It's a lot. Uh, regardless of whether you think any of these guys are going to end up being you know, Eric Carlson level, the fact is they gave up eight different pieces for the guy. Uh, Francis Perron was, of course, a throw-in. Uh, February 25th, 2019, San Jose gets Gustav Nyquist. Detroit gets a 2019 second and a 2020 third. And again, that's for a rental. So they, they give up more draft picks. San Jose's all in on this roster that they have and on the idea that they're going to be good for a while yet to come. Uh, June 18th, 2019, uh, San Jose gets a 2019 second round pick and a 2023rd from Philadelphia for Justin Braun. So in order to try to get back a couple of draft picks, they have to give up Justin Braun. He goes to Philly to the defense that they're in the midst of, of revamping. But it's going to be interesting to see, does the San Jose Sharks uh, end up becoming a champion? Uh, do the San Jose Sharks end up becoming a champion over the next few years, or do they end up regretting giving up those draft picks, or is it going to be a wash? Are we going to look five years down the road and go, ah, those draft picks didn't really pan out anyways. Uh, it really wasn't you know, a huge win for Ottawa or for San Jose. It's just kind of a wash. Going to be an interesting next couple of years for the San Jose Sharks as they try to take Burns and Carlson on that blue line. Um and, and build around that and, and get themselves to a Stanley Cup because you've got Couture and, and Meyer up front and a lot of other pretty darn good players as well. So there you go. The history of the San Jose Sharks. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.